Bungalow Bill here. Early this week, I did some runs of Adventure Mode for the very first time for practice, and it was a it was a bit of a wild ride. I was definitely expecting it to be a bit swingy, and it in fact is. Enemy vehicles start spawning very early, and if they're particularly fast enemy vehicles, they'll just kind of kill you before you can do anything about it, unless you immediately make a submarine, and I am not willing to become what I hate. So, I'm going to be making a boat, if that means that it takes several attempts to actually get a good run, well, then it simply does. One of my attempts, my very first one, the Lightning Hood spawned in a fairly expensive water skimmer, which I got absolutely torched by while I was busy building my missile systems, had no idea what was happening, just laser beam goes straight through me, straight through my heartstone block, and I just die. Uh, there was no way for me to have enough armor to, to stop it either. Next run, I already had a weapon system by the same period of time, but I built cruise missiles to try to take out a similar ship from a long range. And got killed by a Hake Squadron, which, if you include their material load, cost about 20 times what my vehicle did. So, not great. Uh, the run after that, Deepwater Guard ships spawned in first, and those take forever to get to you, so I had all the time in the world. Anyway, let's spawn in. My first adventure, no longer true, but might as well be. I don't do a lot of adventures. And fantastic, we land on this vehicle. Um, oddly, they do not give you engine power to start with. So, the first thing that I'd have to do is either load one of their prefabs or load one of my own, which is what I'm going to do. Following this, I'm just going to sort of build out a basic ship shape, load it up with some materials, drop a weapon system on it, and by the time we're like 10 minutes in, I've harvested a few resources, got something cobbled together, I will start recording again. Right now, I'm basically just going to make this hastily patched together cargo hauler that is going to have a fleet of ships operating around it. Then, and we'll have some rudimentary weapon systems of its own. Once I have um, time to get to a safe haven, basically, I'm going to then try to build up a more advanced flagship that I'll be piloting. The other thing is I am a captain and not a skipper, therefore my ship will be guided by AIs. This is a huge problem because the AI is incredibly expensive, and will likely be about 25% of the cost of my early game ship because of how just how early the AI spawn in their the enemy spawns in their vehicles and how few resources you get. I think that they haven't kept the resources in the adventure mode up with how incredibly expensive they made things. So right now I'm just waiting for enough money to finish my missile system, at which point I will put some locomotion on this vehicle. And basically I'm just doing this to check for enemy craft that has spawned in. And it's really stressful, and I've been doing it for minutes now. We'll look at the progress of the craft. Uh, there's some stuff that I've probably spent a little bit too much money on. The idea is that it's going to be a water skimmer similar to the moth. Although we, uh, we may have some trouble with roll control. I have put roll control and yaw control in, but it might leave something to be desired. It can always be a bit tricky. Inside, there's a little bit of ammo for when I finally have that system in place. A very small AI compartment that just powers one radar because we're just using missiles at the, at the moment, so I just need to know that enemies exist, although I'll put some more redundant stuff on later. We have an engine system for powering our resource gatherers and our heartstone. Eventually I'll replace this with something that doesn't cost me money, and a bunch of empty space with some materials containers. And the second I dropped my turret down, an enemy spawned in, the Coyote. This is actually a very fair fight materials-wise. Of course, I need to stay in the resource patch currently because I don't have enough materials left over after dropping the turret down. It's already firing at me. I am well outside of its range, I think, and these are dumb fire rockets. So, I mean, they could actually hit because I'm literally not moving. 
and it's been firing for a little bit. I accidentally had torpedoes instead of rockets. Um, so this is as far as my first batch made it, I believe. And then I've already begun firing. I set a range of 1500 meters. That's me trying to hit control caps lock. Vegas's. Oh, are those missile interceptors or did something else happen there? I can't tell if we ran out of fuel or time or if we got missile interceptored. If we're getting missile interceptor, then this game is just over. No, that looks like it's our maximum range. If the coyote doesn't come closer, we're going to have trouble. Actually, I should make sure that we're actually firing from the right range. Oh, except now I can't see anything. Because currently I'm just wasting a lot of money. This is three kilometers, uh, which this is always a risk when you're doing things live. Right, there's another weapon controller in here. Yeah, uh, that's the that's always the risk. We can maybe make it a little bit more than this. Let's put it to 1800 for both. And I really like to have this set up as soon as possible because having this sort of thing immediately alerts me when there's an enemy. It's really the reason that I prefer to set things up this way. So I'm still not gonna set up a motion block though. Okay, so we have successfully hit the coyote. That perhaps means that I can extend the range a little bit because we're still not firing. This is where my sail is going to go. It's going to be pure mizzen so that it doesn't take too much room over the deck. Although, uh, there's some interesting issues. Some interesting issues with that, so... Yeah, I'm gonna set it for 2200 meters. It looks like... Looks like we'll probably be able to pull that off. Very close to the range on me. Oh yeah, we're taking a little bit of fire incoming. I'll get some motion set up soon. Right now, our repair tentacles are going to be our predominant defense, but I will get some propulsion as soon as we have some scavenge to get. And then I will armor us up a bit more heavily, because right now we've got two layers of wood in some places, but that's about it. Then at which point I can probably afford to put in some more missiles. It's going to be a while before I think I can afford a decent APS system, though. See our APN guidance leading the target a little bit. Frag maybe not the best choice here, but you're not guaranteed to get deep water guard, so it's a bit more flexible than HE. And okay, then I'm probably gonna have to spend a little bit of time tuning my movement system. I set all the blocks to theoretically align to the correct axes, uh, but it's quite possible that, uh, and even probable, that something won't quite work properly. That's just... I find that these sorts of water skimmers, especially the sail-powered ones, where 
the thrust tends to be very high, and the amount of drag also tends to be very high and very low, it can be difficult to get these balanced properly. Am I going to try to do that uh, live on camera? You know, I don't see why I shouldn't try. Do I want to have a space between the deck level and my my booms? What does it matter, anyway? And we're moving. Not only are we moving, we're actually moving decently fast. We're not rising out of the water like I'd like, though. So, I'm going to add a bit more sail area, and then... See if I can get something moving in that regard, and more for looks than anything else, we'll get ourselves get ourselves a little bit of a boom, a little bit of a mast. It looks like we are highly lacking in roll controls at the moment. Are we not correcting roll? It seems like we are not correcting roll. Well, this is going to be a huge issue. I don't think just setting a PID is going to... You know, that'll do it, won't it, right? Yeah, why isn't my boat doing anything? Well, maybe your AI is off. Um... Listening. Moving out. Water mode in your now. All right, I can set our altitude a little bit higher. This isn't how I want to do it, though. Um, I do want to I actually want to get rid of this. And I want to do it through our UI. Let's... Set everything to 8. I still want to go a bit higher than that, but we'll do it later. Okay, we've got a decent rate of travel. Got a scrapper firing at us currently. And more than likely I have left... yeah... Um, this is my main concern, actually. I can fight the scrapper later. Additionally, although I consider this cheese in the campaign, I do not consider this cheese an adventure. The thing I've noticed is the fill key doesn't work for me in adventure mode right now. I do need... So what I really need to get to have happen soon is... Mm, we need to not be dragging our butt like that. That's slow. Real slow. What's our altitude? Three meters. Either our pitch or our hover controller is... Oh, right, we want... This is super slow. Mm, perhaps our hover is also a bit weak, that I've let my boat get a bit heavy. I didn't have very much money. So I went really, really light with these. We 
Looks like I'm going to need another sail as well. Water skimmers don't work that well in this game. There's just too much drag compared to real life. If you look at how, how a moth works in real life, the, boat, the sailboat, they're pretty fantastic. Uh, not so great in this game. Alright, we're hard over. We might be... Unable to yaw quite as fast as I'd like. Looks like we're going to manage it on this pass. I'm going to pick up those resources and then try to kill the scrap. Oh, uh, this is a vanguard. This is this vanguard, right? I didn't... There was a scrapper, right? Like, I'm not... Not making things up. Okay, should we be firing right now? Are we within range? It looks like we're tracking, and we did in fact hit. Excellent. We just stopped. We don't have a sail, do we? No, we don't. It looks like it's Crime Cannon managed to hit our main block for the sail. This is why repair bots and repair tentacles are essential for sailboats. I will have multiple sails on this boat in the future. But at the moment, it's going to be highly vulnerable. And I will likely have... This boat will be getting, at some point, additional maneuverability other than just pure sails. Something that I would like to see, because I have enough money for it, is I'm not really sure... All caps. I'm not really sure how... How effective sales are in this orientation. That doesn't seem to have done much, does it? Control Z doesn't do anything, because why would it? Didn't really do anything. I can put those sticking off the bottom because they're on sub objects, right? And I think sales have some limited ability underwater. I see flak clouds. Um, the vanguard must have been handled by now. Yes, this is now the vanguard. We will collect our spoils. I would like to begin retrofitting us into alloy, but I know that if I do that all at once, it's going to cause significant issues. It'll just completely drain all my money. So I'm going to start with mission critical blocks. Oh, it looks like I can put a second missile system on as well. That's the thing that I need. Although I need to check to make sure that my ammo is going to support it. I think it will. I think I can... I think these missile systems are one small... Yeah, they're roughly one small container per missile. My... Detection systems tell me that they're tracking a martyr, and there's a Samoon in the distance out here, which is what I am the most interested in, actually, because it is a big sack of resources for me. I wasn't aware that the martyr had flak on it. Um, perhaps that's from something else. 
I do want to be careful approaching the Samoon to not just take a tremendous cram cannon shot, although nothing it does is really tremendous. And it is on the same team as the Jacob's Treehouse. Uh, much of the time in adventure mode, you rely on your enemies fighting each other as well as you. So you really don't like it when they spawn on the same team. I wish it gave distance readings as well. To me it seems like the Jacob's Treehouse may be closer, but that might just be because of how much larger it is. Receiving. Moving the Samoon is considerably down. faster than me, especially because it looks like I am beating to weather on quite the close hauled. Just dramatically slowing me down. Although I don't have a wind indicator, I'm just going based off of... It's off of pitch of the sails, although... I... My sail got caught up on the superstructure, and I had to make it significantly taller and significantly shorter because of that, because for some reason sometimes the sail tries to drive around the front, which I wish I could tell it not to but it got kind of stuck. Receiving. Moving now. We are considerably faster than the Jacob's Treehouse, so I should be able to avoid getting closer. I'm still seeing flak clouds, or maybe timed she in that direction. Makes me think that there's something fighting over there that's not me. Looks like we're now tracking... Yeah, the Samoon. Still need to put a little bit more detection on. Receiving. Moving now. We should be getting close enough to launch our missiles any second now. When I scrape enough money together to buy a decent APS cannon, it is going to be fantastic. I'm just going to absolutely love it. We're also achieving a better point of sale. Our trim looks like it's set for around a beam reach now. Maybe... Maybe a little further. Not not a broad reach, though. Although you can never really tell because, you know, they just put the sail wherever they want to. Our missiles are now launching. Are they launching from all of our missile launchers? It would appear so. Receiving. Moving now. Moving now. Taking command. Put us on. Oh, and it exploded. That has a tendency to happen. You're in control. Get us these nice, juicy resources. Oh, we can't even hold that many resources. Oh, this is wonderful. I am, I am really rich. Well, I'm glad my boat floats, because this is the life of fighting the Deepwater Guard with sails. Uh, also, it can't really do much damage to me other than continually knocking off my sail blocks, which are fortunately almost free to rebuild, so... Just a lot of rebuilding them. Launching some missiles into the water. I would like if they had some kind of automatic routines for like javelin style or tomahawk launches or that sort of thing, although I could be launching them vertically instead. I wanted them horizontally because some enemies like to get real close to you, and vertically launched missiles won't hit them anymore, especially if you keep getting stuck like me because of my Resistance to spend any money to move places. Jacob's Treehouse is really getting shredded. I believe there's a scrapper on the other side. A vanguard. There's a scrapper somewhere else. Looks like it's in combat with something else, though, because I did not do that damage to it. Jacob's Treehouse is uh, kind of as pathetically armed as us, except... It's got, like, the Deepwater Guard carnival theme going on, where just this giant pile of fantastic garbage. A lot of those ships must have been really fun to build. I remember seeing on Reddit the uh, theme park styled Deepwater Guard ship that someone was doing. It was really cool. It, that might be a little bit much to put into the campaign, but... Still really cool. I would it, definitely appreciate it if the Jacob's Treehouse would explode soon. You know, my boat doesn't have stays, so like that's just the sort of thing that you could expect to have happen. 
I'm starting to take a lot of fire. I could really use some more offensive weaponry. Uh, I actually sailed the historical type of boat in competition for a while that uses halyards as it stays because it has a dipping lug rig. So to switch tacks, you have to take the sail down, switch the yard, and put it back up on the other side, which means that you also switch the halyard. So it works as a stay on the other side. It does not work very well, though. Uh, my team had two, set of two sets of masts, a heavy one for high wind and a light one for light wind. Realistically, the heavy set of masts probably weighed like 40 pounds more than the light set. And the boats and crews probably weighed like five to 6,000 pounds minimum. So we probably should have just always used the heavy sets of masts, but a lot of teams, Receiving. if they didn't really keep up with their maintenance, uh, had their dreams dashed by their masts on multiple different occasions. I, I've seen masts snap in competition, and it's it's quite tragic. Fortunately, I haven't heard of anyone getting hurt by that. Something other than the Deepwater Guard has spawned in. I've become temporary allies with the Scrapper. We are shooting a Ripper. Which I would expect to have melee stuff, so I'd like it if it goes after something other than me. Because that would be devastating, which it is currently doing, but it may stop doing soon. Although this uh, little dildo doesn't look like the most terrifying weapon. Okay, it hasn't entered my safe place yet. Please don't. I really have trouble shooting it from this distance. This is really annoying, to be perfectly honest. I didn't provide a way to get myself out of the ship yet. I intend to do that eventually. Oh, interesting. The refit doesn't change ducts. Well, it's not functioning much better than I am, but this is absolutely obnoxious. Please despawn, because I don't have torpedoes. I could build my torpedo boat. Oh, this might actually just kill me. I suppose I should build myself a hatch at the very least. Unfortunately, I put myself in like the worst possible spot to get out of this thing. It is in decorations, right? Upside down. Receiving. And I just have to chill here for a while until I repair a bit, I guess. Because I have no movement at the moment. So, as you can see, I did a little bit of rigging on the moth. On none of these ships that I do rigging if the points are more than 10 or more than 40 meters apart and a single scaled up pole couldn't make it. I also made little cleats. Uh, they're made using large chains and the nuclear parts. I didn't make larger ones or rotate them in interesting ways because you can't scale or paint a set of blocks like that as a whole, so it was kind of unfortunate. Receiving. Moving now. Moving now. And the moth can be free. It is done building. Um somewhere here. Be free. Receiving. Receiving. Also don't crash into my boat. Please. It is launching its torpedoes. It is doing the thing that moths should be doing, I suppose. It might not have 
proper firing restrictions on its weapons. So it might waste a little bit, but I'll get that straightened out off camera. We picked up the majority of the interesting resources. Receiving. Moving now. The moth's also a little bit faster than us. I'll probably spawn in. Oh, maybe I won't spawn in one more. Maybe just having having one is good for now. I'd like to have two little torpedo boats, though. Well, I see one torpedo coming off. They must have gotten desynced a little bit, though, because it looks like neither is actually on the boat at the moment. Receiving. Moving now. Okay, torpedo lifetime is considerably higher than missile lifetime, so... Oh, that might have been our torpedo detonating early. They can be really hard to see sometimes. Might have something with my really low graphic settings. Receiving. The moth torpedoes also move pretty fast. They have a little bit more fuel than they necessarily need. So I cranked up the speed on them a little bit. I see HE damage, so that had to have been a torpedo connecting. And then the frag missiles come in. Yeah, this will definitely speed up quite a bit as I just get a few more craft in here. Interesting that the moth is taking the fire though. I don't know if it's because it's closer or not, but it is the smaller boat. Also looks a lot better. <laughs> not just this big rectilinear blob that moves kind of slow. Definitely a less rushed building process. Not getting the most damage in with those missiles, but they don't have the most firepower either. Oh, well, they're staggering one at a time, so it's about 32,000 per volley, I guess. Unless that's both at the same time and I just didn't see. Definitely time to get the Sunfish and Angler together soon, though, and move up a difficulty. Their, their additional firepower will be highly welcomed. The Sunfish will blow up ships like this in one bombing run. Yeah, so it's one torpedo at a time coming in. Is that a green portal? Maybe from a distance before I thought that was a resource zone. I thought... and a blue portal as well. I thought I could only have red portals right now. Well, I believe that's enough from the depths for one episode. I finally managed to start getting my fleet together. Hopefully things will snowball fairly soon. I'll be able to get a sunfish and an angler. And then eventually make an actually decent flagship. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.